Our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. These are the famous lines from the 1968 Kerner Commission report. The Bipartisan Commission was created by President Lyndon Johnson to look into the massive racial protests erupting around the country at the time. It really did a pretty thorough accounting of the rampant racial disparities in the United States. The alternative will require a commitment to national action. From every American, it will require new attitudes, new understanding, and above all, new will. The problem was that when that report was issued, it was put on a shelf and forgotten because it was deemed to be too radical by the federal government. It doesn't take a whole lot of squinting to see how clearly you can map that accounting of inequality from 1968 onto 2020. Now, America is once again wrestling with an uncomfortable history. So why do we seem to find ourselves in a cycle? And what can the past tell us about how to move forward? I'm Jessica Mendoza with the Christian Science Monitor, and this is Precedented a series that explores how history can help us understand the issues we face today. In this episode, protests and racial justice. Police bystanders at the beating scene will not be indicted. For decades, violence and police brutality against black Americans have ignited racial justice protests. From the riots that erupted in Los Angeles in 1992, after the acquittal of the officers who beat Rodney King, all the way back to the Silent March in 1917, sparked by the massacre of black people in East St. Louis, Illinois. George Floyd! George Floyd! Police brutality is the most violent and visible aspect of white supremacy. So this has sparked an outrage not unlike the photograph of Emmett Till in 1955. The photograph of his disfigured body was so morally repulsive that it ignited the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Protests themselves don't write laws, but protests inspire people to act, inspire best practices to be reformed. Every American citizen must have an equal right to vote. There were amazing and meaningful games during the 1960s, but those games were always partial, and the vision of the movement went unfulfilled. To understand why, experts say we need to recognize the different lenses through which we see protests. Will they be more these sort of rights-focused narratives of people making a legitimate claim for a redress of grievances, or will it draw on a crime narrative those are like deeply held narratives in our culture. Smashed windows uh, and looting are becoming a bigger story uh, than the broken systems that got us here. In the past, when protests turn violent, the public focus tends to be on the crime perspective. That happened in 1968, as riots broke out after Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination. Shoot to kill any arsonist or anyone with a Molotov cocktail in their hand in Chicago. And again in 1992, following public outrage at the Rodney King beating. What we saw last night is not about civil rights. It's been the brutality of a mob, pure and simple. The response in those moments was one of rampant police escalation, rather than listening to people and trying to understand what all of the underlying grievances were. I can't breathe. My foot gets her foot off my neck. I can't breathe. Still, some leaders and law enforcement agencies are already making policy reforms. And while there's no guarantee that today's activists will see all the changes they're calling for, History tells us that we can transform the societies we live in. The ability to continually generate visions and strategies for freedom speaks to a deep well of creativity and commitment. We need to reckon with our past with clarity and honesty and move forward in our future with commitment and generosity to actually make something livable for 
all of us. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit thumbs up or the share button. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please drop them in the comment section down below.